It's mailbag time here on Chicago Bears Now, and today's mailbag is sponsored by Magic Spoon. Guys, if you want the best cereal in the game, you got the peanut butter, you got the cocoa flavor, and a lot more. But the best part, very, very healthy. Get $5 off. Go check them out at magicspoon.com slash bears. Get back into the breakfast game like I have with Magic Spoon. Let's go, hop into your questions here. Super Chats are first, so if you want to get onto the show, you can Super Chat or use hashtag Bears. Darnell Mooney uh, will prove to be a wide receiver round, and our offensive line is no longer a concern. Hashtag Bear down. I love Darnell Mooney. He's going to continue to get better and better. I said before this year, I don't know if he could ever be a number one. I might be proven wrong on that. I would still like to keep Allen Robinson, but if Mooney keeps progressing, I'm with you. There's a chance that he could be a number one. And uh, A, appreciate the Super Chat. B, the O-line, it's playing pretty well. Jason Peters played awesome on Sunday at left tackle. Uh, the interior got beat a couple of times. Sam Mustafer, I don't know if he's the long-term answer at center, but I think he's passable for this year. And by the way, Jermaine Ifedi at right tackle through two games, pretty good job. I, I, I'm with you. The O-line overall is much better than expected. Next up, Christopher Seahack. What's your opinion on Dalton's performance after the Bears game? Look, Andy Dalton has done what he's been asked to do. There, there's no doubt about that. Now, again, you look at the numbers, it's a lot of Dinkin and Duncan, 9 for 11, 56 yards, beautiful touchdown throw to Allen Robinson, but he was efficient, he was effective, the offense was moving the ball. It's very unfortunate what happened to him getting banged up. But you guys have said this, I have known this, the ceiling with Andy Dalton is, you know, an above average starter in the NFL. You can win with that, but everything around you has to be going really, really well. The defense has to be dominant. Now, if the defense gives you what you got this last Sunday the entire season, you could make the playoffs with Andy Dalton. Do you think that's going to happen week in and week out, though? That seems unlikely. So, you know, I like Dalton. He's a quality vet. I just think Justin Fields is the guy, man. Don't you want to see him play? I'm ready. I was no problem with starting Dalton for the year. And if he was 100% healthy, sure, start him against the Browns. But I think Fields is going to come in and take this job. I really do think that by the time Dalton's 100%, uh, Justin Fields will have earned being the starting quarterback. Rob Riggle, is Chicago going to address nickel or just accept sucking at that position? This is a good question, Rob, uh, because two, two games in, you've tried both your nickels. Duke Shelley left inactive for week one. Marquis Christian got torched. He got uh, confused on a couple of uh, busted coverages. So you flipped it this week. Duke Shelley got the start. He was a little better, but he was still pretty bad. Like, Duke Shelley and Marquis Christian are not good in coverage. So I would explore what's out there. I'm not a huge fan of your nickel options. Kendall Vilder, he hasn't played great at CB2 either, for being honest. He played better in week two. I guess you can live with him, but what you can't live with is him and bad nickel play. You got to you gotta address one of those two, in my opinion, if you're trying to sure up this defense for this year. So those are my thoughts. Hopefully uh, they end up uh, doing that before the trade deadline or in free agency. What do you guys think? Should the Bears sign a nickel cornerback? Type Y for yes, type N for no. I'm not saying there's great options out there. I'm saying Marquis Christian and Duke Shelley aren't very good. So I'm going to type my wife for yes and see what else is out there. You could also promote Thomas Graham for the practice squad and see what he can bring to the table. Let's keep this mailbag going here. Benny DeBully. Wow. Don't bully me, please. It's going to be time soon to resign, re-sign some of our players like A-Rob, Roquan, and Jalen. Jalen Johnson's only in his second year. You've got you got a couple years here. I think after this year, we trade Eddie Goldman for a third. Ah, what's his value now? He hadn't played in a year and a half. Trade Cohen for a sixth and trade uh, Eddie Jackson for a fourth. I mean, I do think it's possible the Bears make some roster moves on their defense uh, with some of their uh, aging guys and try to get some draft compensation back. Uh, but I think it's too early in the season to say what those might be. I'm not convinced they bring Allen Robinson back. If they wanted him long term, why did they not sign him last offseason? Doesn't mean they won't, but uh, I think out of those three, Roquan is priority one. You can wait on Jalen Johnson for a year or two, but I do think long-term he's going to be here as well. Can't pay everybody, so uh, Ryan Pace is going to have to pick and choose. Alan Watson, can we please design some rollout plays for Fields, please? They had one or two that they utilized. Look, I think with him getting the first-team reps all week, because even if Dalton – maybe has a tiny chance of playing. I don't expect him to practice much this week. I do believe that uh, Matt Nagy will tweak the playbook to Justin Fields' strengths this week. We'll have to see it happen. We have to see it, uh, you know, be uh, uh, get put into uh, 
action on Sunday, uh, but I thought we saw him use some of his mobility on uh, Sunday against the Bengals. Obviously, a full week of practice helps. He gets to throw to the number one receivers, the tight ends. He gets to play behind the number one offensive line, and everyone gets more comfortable with the different quarterback in there. So, big week of practice and obviously a huge game here on Sunday. Big game for Matt Nagy, too. This is an opportunity. Hey, what are your plans for Fields? How much are you going to let him let it rip it? Uh, we'll find out here on Sunday because you can't play it safe on the road against a team like Cleveland. B. Zane, let Bill, Bill Lazor call the plays. Uh, we're not there yet. It's not going to happen this soon. If the offense uh, sputters for several weeks, that could happen. Santos Marino, any chance we can scoop up a solid CB in the draft next year? Sure. I mean, you don't have a first-round pick right now because uh, of the Justin Fields trade-up. But uh, it, Jalen Johnson was a second-round pick last year, and he's maybe a top-10 NFL corner right now. So, yeah, there's absolutely opportunities. Uh, got to scout well, and you got to pick the right guys. So, definitely a chance. Uh, we'll see what happens uh, in the draft next year. What did you guys eat for breakfast today? It's the most important meal of the day. So, I want to know, did you have cereal, some waffles? Did you have, you know, did you skip breakfast? Uh, did you get some bacon, some eggs? What did you have? for breakfast today and maybe sometimes you're in a rush you're like I don't have time to cook breakfast or pick anything up uh, well Magic Spoon is the perfect alternative this cereal is healthy it's fantastic it's high in protein it's going to give you the energy you need to start your day off very very nicely go to magicspoon.com slash bears get five dollars off the best thing about Magic Spoon is uh, you just order it online at that link it's not in any grocery stores it's all online they'll ship it to you boom you got your cereal for the next week plus with Magic Spoon High in protein, low in carbs, zero grams of sugar compared to normally 11 or 12 grams of sugar per serving with normal cereals. And it's sweet and delicious like those normal cereals. They have mastered the taste and the health benefits of this cereal. That's why it's called Magic Spoon. Get $5 off at magicspoon.com slash bears. We'll pepper that link in the live chat and, of course, in the comments and in the description. Magicspoon.com slash bears. Get going with Magic Spoon cereal right now and don't miss this opportunity. All right, another super chat from Embrog. Appreciate it. Do you have three things that we need for us to be a legitimate playoff contender? If Justin Fields can come in and be legit. Now, I'm not saying he has to be a top 10 NFL quarterback, but can his good be really good? That's number one. Number two, the secondary has to clean things up. I, the safeties, you you got to be able to rely on Eddie Jackson and Tashawn Gibson. thought they both played a lot better in week two. You need consistent play out of them. Uh, and then that, you know, that CB2 nickel spot, you got to get better play there. And then number three, uh, can the O-line hold up? I think your starting group r right now is good enough, but if you have one or two injuries, you're going to be in big trouble. So I would say those are three areas uh, that if you get good play there, you've got a real shot of making the playoffs. I mean, who knows? Maybe make a run. Jeremy Wayne, which defense do you expect in week three? Defense from week one or defense from week two? Well, number one, you're going on the road, so it's going to be a harder environment. Uh, you're playing a better team than you played in week two. I don't think it'll be as bad as week one, but I also wouldn't expect four turnovers uh, against Cleveland either. They run the football a lot. Baker Mayfield has gotten a lot better of not putting ball, uh, balls into harm's way. Um, so can you get two turnovers? You got zero in week one, four last week. Can you get two? I think you get two. That's, that's pretty good against this Browns offense. I would expect somewhere in between the two performances uh, this week. Angelo Cervantes, appreciate the super chat. Hashtag Bears, you owe me a shave. Angelo, you're absolutely right. I believe you're the one who sent the $100 super chat. Uh, I'll answer this question, then we'll address the shaving. Jarvis Landry out, Baker banged up, OBJ may not play, Bears win. Look, that's true. Landry's out, OBJ, we'll see if he goes. Baker's got a left shoulder. If you're watching live, we'll get into a preview of this game here in just a few minutes, so stay tuned for that. Uh, send me full screen here, uh, Sam, because I want to address Angelo and... Bears uh, fans, Bears Nation directly. Follow me on Twitter. I tweeted this morning, at HGramNFL, breaking news, I'm sorry, I left my razor at home. It was my mistake. I pull up at work and I'm like, crap, I don't have my razor. Uh, I live too far away from the office to go home and come back. It would have taken an hour. I uh, didn't have time uh, to do that. So what we're going to do is do it during our live watch party on, on Sunday, which more people will be watching anyway. So I think that'll be a better experience for everyone involved. We'll be drinking beers, watching the game, and I'll shave during the game as well. We good? I know I I'm a fraud. I broke my word, but we're still going to do it this Sunday. Follow me on Twitter, and uh, we'll uh, keep you guys updated over there. But I promise we will shave live on the show this Sunday. 
Joel Fernandez, we got time for a couple more questions here. Will our defense be better on Sunday with Edwards Jr. and Goldman coming back? Uh, well, let's see if Goldman comes back. Depending on when you're watching this, we may, uh, we may know by then. But if you're watching live on Tuesday, that's very much up in the air. Mario Edwards Jr. will be activated after his two-game suspension, so that will help. He's good against the run. He's a good pass rusher. So, yeah, that helps. I, I, I think if you, could, if you could get Goldman back especially to help stuff the run of Cleveland, that would be monumental for the Bears' defense. Al Melendez, what is your opinion on this taunting penalty? This, this penalty is a effing joke. I tweeted this out during the game. Tashawn Gibson, after, uh, who was it, Jamar Chase dropped a slant, just claps and looks at him. Like, that's, that's taunting. We're flagging that. Like, guys, a lot of these dudes grew up uh, playing at the park where they're playing hoops or flag football or whatever. Yeah, they talk a little shit. It's the NFL. They're grown men. That's what happens. It's obvious when someone crosses a line. That was not crossing a line. And guess what? The guy who hit Andy Dalton and got in his face, that wasn't crossing the line either. It's good competition. No one wants to see that. This rule is a joke. If I was the NFL PA, I would say, we're not playing another game until we get rid of this rule. Seriously, because it's the worst rule in football. You know the meme where it's like, nobody... Nobody asked for this rule. And then NFL commissioner's office, let's enforce a taunting penalty. That's what happened here. No one thought this was a good idea, and now uh, we're, uh, we're, we're calling taunting for, like, the dumbest crap. This is going to cost team games, I'm telling you right now. And when it does, I'm going to be the one laughing because it's an absolute joke of a rule. Make sure to subscribe because you get the realest takes like I just gave you here on Chicago Bears Now, youtube.com slash bears. Now, we cover the latest Bears news, injury, injury news and rumors as well, breaking news situations, game previews. We do it all, these live mailbags as well, every Tuesday, 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 o'clock Central. So subscribe and do not miss any of our shows here on Chicago Bears Now. Okay, Joe Chavez, we're desperate for a better corner. What are some options we can pick up? Do you think Pace is even looking? Look, all GMs are always looking for ways to upgrade their roster, right? I, I, they really are. I, I know that sounds like the cliche answer, but that's just the truth. Uh, if you're not, you're not doing your job. Uh, Richard Sherman is out there. I don't think the Bears are probably near the top of his list. He wants to play for a team that he thinks for sure will contend. The Bears, that's very much up for debate at this point. We'll see. Um, there's a couple nickels out there. Uh, there's a couple uh, that uh, came to mind uh, that I'm drawing a blank on. There are some options. Are they great options? Of course not. We're into week three of the season. You're not going to have superstars out in free agency. But you can't just settle for Duke Shelley and Marquis Christian. Like They're not starting caliber players. Tyrone, appreciate the five bucks. You are the man. Super Chats really help support the show. We'll always show you on screen as well. Tyler Hendrickson, why pay Robinson top five money if the dude isn't bringing down 50-50 balls, stemming back to last year? No need to cash strap ourselves to a receiver we like. Look, I, to your credit, a couple of jump balls last year he didn't win on. He should have caught that ball from Fields. But could you imagine if how bad the offense would have been last year if he wasn't on this team? He had over 1,200 yards. Like, and that was a bad offense. I still am a huge Allen Robinson supporter, but I agree. He needs to win those 50-50 balls. He needs to come He needs to come out uh, down with touchdowns when they're there to be made in the end zone. And 8 for 59 in a touchdown through two games is not acceptable. He needs to play better. I think he's going to have a huge game on Sunday. Uh, let's see how this year plays out, Tyler. If he has like an eight or 900-yard season or something like that, yeah, like they're not going to pay him top dollar. Uh, but if, if he rallies and has 12, 1,300 yards – over 100 catches like he has the last two years, that might make the Bears think differently. Okay, Ethan Eli, do you think Robert Quinn has been better this year? I know he doesn't deserve his contract, but he's looked great. Week one, he didn't do much. Week two, he was really good. He had an awful uh, late hit penalty on Joe Burrow, which extended a drive and gave the Bengals a field goal. But other than that, he played really good. Had a sack, uh, got a lot of pressure, even made, made a play or two in the run game. He even dropped into coverage on Jamar Chase once and held his own. I don't know how that happened, but it actually did. Uh, yeah, Quinn's played better. He's never going to live up to the $70 million contract Ryan Pace gave him. But can he give you eight sacks this year? Can he be a legitimate number two pass rusher next to Khalil Mack? If you get that, then okay, it's at least a livable contract at that point. Amos Goldberg, what do you think of Jermaine Fetty's success? He's played great, man. He's played really, really solid at right tackle. If you get this level of play, $4.5 million, $5 million, whatever he's making, that's a steal. So I'm happy with him. I think the tackles have been solid. Jason Peters still at 39 moves well, and he just puts people on their ass. I love the physicality he plays with. So 
I'm happy with it. If those two guys stay healthy, I think they'll be more than adequate this season. Super chat from Mustafa, Justin Fields, QB1 for the Browns. I mean, that's what it sounds like, right? Unless uh, Andy Dalton um, miraculously can play with that bone bruise, which all the medical experts say that's at least a two-week injury. So, yeah, I think Justin Fields will start in week uh, three of the NFL season. Can I get a bear down? Appreciate everybody who submitted their questions on today's show. Can I get a bear down? Let's keep the energy going heading into that game against the Browns. So type bear down or use the emojis bear down in the comments.